Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to our, session, uh, to our session on uh, native responses to the extinction of animals. I am going to share my screen uh, for a few brief uh, slides and then we will move on with um, our guests, um, participants. Let me see here. Right, so our panel today is called Native Responses to the Extinction of Animals. And it is a chapter from a larger digital work called The Social Relation to Nature, a Digital Variable Pathway Resource. And this has been made possible by a seed grant from the Institute for Humanities Research at Arizona State University. And the co-PIs on this, um, along with uh, myself, uh, Todd Swanson, is uh, Janice uh, Knuckles, who we have with us uh, today. And this, um, this work is an original interpretation of the Amazonian social relation to nature. Sometimes people call that animism, but I prefer to think about it as the way in which humans re relate to nature as though they were human-like in a social manner. And this is organized into short chapters that are presented digitally. And they're linked to about 100 uh, short videos of origin stories, songs, and testimonies in three native languages, Amazonian Quichua, Achuar, and Huautadero. And they have subtitles in English and Spanish. Uh, and they are meant to exemplify not only concepts, but also the emotional and aesthetic and social responses to nature. And they're linked through variable viewing pathways. Um, our goal with this, um, the audience we imagine are people who we hope to shape as living bridges between indigenous knowledge and academic traditions. And we hope to do this from two directions. Uh, one audience we envision perhaps the most important are indigenous young people, people from indigenous homes, seeking to integrate the science they learned in school with their background traditions that we hope to record in these native language videos. But another equally important audience are non-indigenous young people interested in connecting uh, to their local environment by learning more about it from those who've lived there longer, from the uh, native people uh, who are from those places. Um, and as I've said, this is a, a variable uh, pathway. And um, let me see here. I just want to see if I could move this out of the way. Sorry. So it, it's, a, it's a resource that you can get to from both, from two directions. One is, um, to start with uh, humans, and it's organized around the human life cycle. Uh, all of these are humans in social relation to nature, so we can look at childhood or move through the, the human life cycle, or, or you'll be able to access this resource uh, by from the nature side, um, and it's also indexed so that you can search by species, by plant, animal, species, and get to the same uh, videos. And then there's a third way of accessing this. And the, this is the idea that humans and the plants, animals, nature are connected uh, by beauty uh, through the arts. Um, so there you can, we'll, there'll be a section to connect through the visual arts, uh, through uh, the smells of the land, uh, through language, um, and through humor, and also through music and lament. And my copy, I, Janice Knuckles, is a linguist who specializes in uh, uh, the study of uh, idiophones, gestures, and the poetics of Quechua. And so she's been working 
uh, hard on from from this angle, and we'll present some of this uh, today. Um, so the chapter that we will look at today is one on the disappearance of animals, um, and these are various videos. We only show a few of them today, but there are uh, quite a, a lot of videos that are gathered together if you go to that page that you can cycle through on this theme of the disappearance of animals. Um, to me, this is a very significant uh, topic that we'll look at today. Wildlife populations have decreased by an average of 68% in the 50 years between 1970 and 2016 according to the World Wildlife Foundation. But this drop has been unequal. In Latin America, the decrease has been 94%. Um, and this, this drop is highest in the areas that had the most to lose. And these remaining areas of highest animal presence are in the indigenous territories because they have the most to lose, these areas have also been where the decline is steepest. And with the departure of the animals, indig an indigenous way of living in relation to them is also in danger of becoming a memory. To so slow this decline, um, I'm convinced that scientists must listen to better understand and collaborate with those who carry this indigenous knowledge. Hence the significance of our topic uh, native responses to the disappearance of animals. And it's a great privilege today to be able to have brought together various indigenous voices, often voices, some of them from the Amazon, uh, which until very recently, uh, has we haven't been able to connect to digitally. And um, now we have this chance to listen today. And it's my great honor uh, today to have with us um, Laura Tohi, who is uh, Diné, better known uh, sometimes as Navajo. It's a term which means the people. Um, interestingly enough, it's also uh, all of our other narrators are Quechua speakers who also call themselves Runa, which also means the people in their language. Um, and Laura Tohi is um, a, pro, a professor emerita uh, at Arizona State University and also um, the Navajo Nation Poet Laureate. And it's a great honor to have you today, here today, Laura. And I'll stop sharing my screen and turn it over to you to begin our session, open our session on native responses to the disappearance of animals. Um, thank you, Todd. Uh, before I get started, I want to introduce myself to you in my own language, to Nepizad, the people's language. And I will just briefly tell you who my clan family are. She'e Laura Tohi in a shed sena hapili mishna, Twitter chaitni bashes chin, John A. Twathana dasha che doma e deshkeji dasha nala. Shama Laura Florence Woliende, Shaja A. Benson Tohi Woliende, Kade Otkuto E. Asa Nishle. So I'm just going to have Todd um, translate what I said. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I Let, me, first of all, <laughs> Let me first of all uh, say it in English. Yes. Um, I'm, my name is Laura Tohi, and I am Sleepy Rock People Clan, which is on my mother's side. And I am Bitterwater people clan on my father's side. And my maternal grandfather clan are the Sun clan people. And my paternal grandfather clan are the Coyote Pass people. And as a Diné woman, as a Navajo woman, this is how I identify myself. Thank you, Laura. I will uh, uh, translate that. Uh, Pai ning, ali chisi ning, pasa chingi runa simiman nikan, pai, pai was shooti Laura Toki, pai ang dine, dine ang pai was simi, ninung runa, dine, pai was simi. Sinat pi, pai guna charinung, o pai charinung, chusku, ailu, pai wa rukumama ailu, i rukoyaya, 
ayllu guna y pai guna charinong chi ayllu charin uh, charin suti su ayllu an ya punui uh, rumi guna inon y su kan ayak yaku runa su gaiyu y su gaiyu randi an indi runa y su gaiyu an randi lobo runa guna si chusku ayu ra charinun paiwa ruku yaya y ruku mama una paiwa ayu sinaki paigun paiang ya kusiang kai bitanga sin salud dam paigun pai kangunar ale Thank you. Gracias. Nalina. Wacha kanguna limangi kuna pai rimanga. No, no. Okay, go ahead, Laura. Okay. Um, I want to read this poem uh, to you um, because I was inspired by a an exhibit in Portland, Oregon um, about two years ago. And I saw there an exhibit that reminded me of animals and someone was leading these animals away, it seemed to me. So as a poet, that's what I was interpreting uh, in this exhibit. Should I wait for you to um, translate or should I continue? I think on? just go ahead. Yeah, I'll have to go um, translate okay. later. It might take too long. Okay. So this is what I saw in this exhibit, and um, it reminded me of a lot of things. And one of the things it did remind me of were how we Diné people see the animals as very much part of our lives and a part of, it, of our creation stories. Um, we have certain animals that are also, in many ways, much more heroic than humans are. And as for that reason, you know, we try to emulate some of these animals that are more heroic. But in this poem that I wrote, it's me seeing these animals and what would happen if the animals were to leave? How would we humans feel about that? Japanese garden, after a stone and sand exhibit in Portland. A man is leading the animals. A man is leading the ones that float on water. A man is leading the winged ones. A man is leading the ones that swim. Maybe he's St. Francis, the long robed man who calls the animals to him now. Maybe he's Noah, the one who gathered the animals and sailed away with them, they say. Who was there? to witness their leaving, to sing a song for their journey. Where are they going? Their faces turned northward, taking their songs, taking their maps, taking their languages. Are they leaving with joy in their hearts or is sadness eating at their star hearts? In the wake of their leaving, a small wind stirs the empty hands of the tree branches above us. What I will remember, footsteps left like dinosaur tracks, pressed between sky woman and mother earth. When they leave, I will weep, I will weep. Hmm. So, and this is the um, Navajo version of this poem. And the, for me, in, in, in the Na Navajo language, it's much more personal, much more um, spiritual, I think, than in the English language, especially for a poem like this about animals. Japanese dak ehte yaja. Japanese dak e yaja te. Portland de danil iniki. Hasti late na loshi yo ish, hasti late da ishiki yo ish, hasti late da taiki yo ish, hasti late da askoki yo ish. Saint Francis starts it, the eight na shoulder. 
Hastkin di yene nelle cene Kadatze dalt loshi yoje Noa tatze atve Nalt loshi cena el ya ayila Dobil i el cene I da Hesha be nal Hesha hakone di need Hesha ya hot hal Kad hagosha jedez ej Dabini naho constrigo da des e Dabin de cha Kea be ilyagi de cha Bizad de cha Bilta wisno dance Dodat a double hat Nal loshit is belat hat Nal yol yajiko adaila Di benashnito Na sho il baha bizaza e bike eschin, bike eschin. Yadel hil asa do nehima na asa betraget na nalto na halen. Anakrego descha descha. That's the um, Navajo version of that. And, um, I don't know if you want, did you want to interpret what I said? Um, yeah, I just very shortly, I, I will, because I can't, you know, translate the poem on the spot, but um, I think then I'm going to present, I'm going to tell them about the poem just briefly. And then I would like to move directly before breaking, because I don't want to break the spell of that powerful poem. And I would like to then present three short videos in which our native narrators from the Amazon are speaking directly about the disappearance of the animals. And uh, I want to be able to do that right against the power of the poem that you just read, uh, Laura. And then I'm going to introduce them because the introduction might sort of, and then we'll have, a, we'll converse a little bit. Paiguna su, bueno, pai su poema, ya, limaca. Si poema, an animal guna manda, viva guna. Pai tapon, mai tararica, viva guna. Tukui, viva guna, ya, singadisa, ya, callarinum. Mai tararinum, cayuna. Manju, noea, pasca. Manju suruna a pasca. Mi cantina di cungaranche, cae canguna video guna nya, pai amo a pan. Sina riman, pai poema. Mai taradin, animal guna. Ai guna risca wasa, nyuka ansa. Yaki, yaki, tiangaraunia. Nyuka sungu ansa. Yaki ding, si animal guna. Mana uyakpi, mana uyachikpi. Nariman paiwa poema. Nakpikuna, era ni imsa cortos videos. Pedro paiwa video y Gloria paiwa video y Delicia. Y Chihuahua ni presentan garauni pai kangunara, ansa cuentan gachi video manda. ¿Ya? Sangarauncha. Ok, so now I would like to. Um, Go with the first video and then the second right after it, if we could. Please watch the subtitles very carefully because they'll be in the Quechua language so that we can discuss these later and I'm anxious to hear from everyone. <laughs> Pai, o amo, minha pinheirinha, ela se me ofereceu, pai, 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 p
Paiwa animal guna ni mana masih amuci mak. Cirai gua kai dinya mana masih tigrang ni. Ni aku kari pinya ambil gua lari kisah di kono. Ish ini ambil cari kono paiwa. Cau pegi kai ya. Kono siang muka ni cau pegi anak mal siang. Kai gua ash tu kucis kau paiwa kuri si kas nari. Kas nasi di kas. Kas pukul ya sepui. Eh, mai tas kan? Ash tas kan? Manjari gua. Pai gua cima tu siang muka ya misal. Muka dari nu kai bilau kau gak kai be. Kai bilang, yang aku pukul yang apa yang nak purga sama itu kan? Kau nak guna salta? Pusing ya, supaya awak mesti awak pusing yang apa itu? Kita saya mesti cari para mikung. Ia aku tak jadi utas sebab payu guna ukiran siapa? Kau iman dah payu guna rugu guna ni no? Ia apa payu wah ia apa? Asyik kacang ni mis, syungur payu terupa cinga. Mis kira mik suah saya payu guna saya mesti ia aku rasa kau ikut ikut nak kau itu. Kau itu. Nanti suah sejak tiga ratus tahun. Syuk tiga ratus pun syuk saya mesti. Syuk tiga ratus pun sih ikut kau ikut. Juk show kan juk show sih. Siapa sih lihat kan? Siapa yang berulang ulang sih mana tiari sih? Siapa sih? Wahyu cikun. Mai kan bi. Pitch kan wahyu cikun. Sih total ya. Pitch kan. Sih orang sih mana cikun. Dunia tiari sih lah. Tuk kucing. Sih mana boleh awak kasih sih kan? Sih mana sih ente kan? Wahyu cinga kait. Wahyu cinga. Amat. Amat sih guna mi guna uti nih. Mana sih orang guna cari cikun. Kaya aku boleh awak kasih sih kan? Siram pinya cinya. Amu pinya ni supaya awak amu supaya awak animal berarnya pusing syukta. Syuk luar pusing. Run nama nak tak kau syuk luar. Cirai aku kau pun tu nyah kau nak nyah mana sih amu? Wah kelis ke? Dua ini nyah ring nyah kelu kucing. Pai kelis ke angg nyah les ke syuk pitch ke? Wat tu pun kau mana puring? Pasang macam tu. Kau nak share kau mana lutan? Kau tu pai awamu kau pai awa pai awa nara kau. Tak pasang saksi ni. Nyukan ciri kukti ker. Kau tu pas kau nak kau kukti. Kerupai pun nyai begini, kau tak ada jadi. Tapi pasal tu, tu ini tapang nyai memas cini kau nak cini. Tapi tu ini jauh sekali memilih nanti. Jauh jauh kan, jauh jauh kan, jauh kan nama dia. Tu ini jauh sekali. Tapi kau nyai, tapi kau nyai begini. Tapi pas ke sini ada kering sih, ni kan sini ada kering kau ke. Mana tapa yang? That that video is particularly poignant to me because it's on uh, the land where we live and where uh, my wife's family and where Elizabeth um, is from and grew up. And what Pedro is presenting there is the disappearance of pacas, the local extinction of pacas or disappearance of pacas, which even five years ago or 10 years ago used to be in abundance and now are gone. And he asked me why. We're going to put another short video on right now in which Elodia, uh, at that same place, uh, talks about how her father would go out in the forest and hear people, someone leading the animals away and closing the door, uh, locking them inside the mountains. And this is the notion that uh, the animals have masters or spirit leaders. Oh, hard to understand who these people are, but there's something like uh, similar to Hopi, uh, idea of Hopi Kachinas in some way or another. They live inside the mountains and they uh, um, are the leaders or guardians of the animals who are taking them away. So this is a very short uh, video just of her father telling her about hearing the door slam. Let's uh, play that video and then we'll talk to them. Nyukaya ya kuinta garacita ga kainya sacha tapuringa waring chiga nya ashka ai chaguna nya tupari wong sacha ai chaguna tupari kai nung kai chiga nya tapa i pasang pa yam ina hita atalata nyukanche kaya sha tapa ganche chikuinta shi pa iwas tapa mitsasha chas na mitapa ma tapa shi kuyari ra chuare ko tami aham sa tuku ki waira shi na sha mora nya nisha kuinta ga gara nyukaya ya. Amo ga mitza mau paiche. Mitza. Aau mitza. Atalia ta nyukanchi imashina to ibanchi. Chi shuk shuangara upi mitzanchi. Chi asna pai amo ga mitza mau. Amo apina. Amo ana apina uchong nisha. Amo ana apina uchong nisha. Chi asna asha ta minya tapa minya mitza. Okay. Don Pedro. I'd, I'd like to just present the two narrators from this. Um, first of all, Elodia Kanda Presentasha, Elodia Dawa. Um, and 
We have also with us Pedro Andy Elodia is from uh, the Andua Nation, and her sister is another narrator with us, Belhika Dawa, also from the Andua Nation, and um, Pedro Andi, uh, who narrated the other video from uh, the Kijos Kichwa Nation. Nakpi Ali Shamuskangiche, Kanguna, Yansa, Saluda Pangi, Elodia Kangyo Papunda, Chuasha Pedro, and Chuasha Belhika. Salapangi pai kai grupura. Nyuka kan kayas kamanda kushia se shamushkani ya ya tomas nyuka kunan chishi pai na tu soma tu pana kushia nyuka pai na ta saludani soma ta kuita saludani. So Elodia says she's very happy to be here. She was very happy to hear that we were going to have this conference and to be able to be with us here too. Uh, discuss about the topic. Pedro Kang Shimeliara, Ansa Saludangi. Ari Gishi, Don Tomasi, Tupi, Kaybe Uyahuna, Samuskani Kankayaji Chesina, Kay Queen Taylor, Queen Tashanisha, Kangunar, Ari Gishi, Don Tomasi, Tupi, Uyahuna. Ms. Capagaracha. Don Pedro, uh, somebody who I've worked with also for a long time. He's a, a cousin of my wife's and a cousin of Elizabeth here. Um, and he says that he's also very happy to hear that we had this conference on this topic and happy to talk with us uh, this afternoon on this topic and says good afternoon to everyone. Um, and then also we have Belhika uh, Dawa, Elodia's sister, also from the Andua Nation. and. Um, somebody with a great deal of knowledge of uh, the forest tradition. Both she and Elodia grew up um, in the forest, really moving around in the forest. One of the, some of the sort of dwindling number of people who actually moved around with the animals in the forest with their parents as, as, as children. Nakpi Belhika, bueno, alichisha y cambas, saluda pange. Alichishi e Thomas kai bin uyaukuna pagrachu nisha na pani kai alichishi kan kai achishkamanda kai angsa kuinta ita charisha chita kuinta ngawa kan kai achishkamanda paktamushkan nyoka soma tukui bingo na bang alichishi nisha pagrachu pagrachu. Uh, so Belhika also says good afternoon and that she's very happy also and interested to talk about the topic. Um, I think that before we have our, our first discussion, I want to show one more video and this adds something quite powerful, I think, to what we just saw. And this is the idea that in traditional times, people there were not only um, spirit masters of the animals, but people who lived and adapted their body uh, to their relations to the earth and animals in such a way that they were almost like living human guardians of the animals. And one of these persons was uh, the father of Elodia and Belhika Dawa. He was a man named Tomas Dawa. And when he died, uh, his sister, Delicia, narrates this video. She went to out to the in the forest to where he lived, but out to bury him. And when she got out there, she found that all the animals had fallen silent because in grief of his dying, they had disappeared. And she had a, learned a song that was meant to call back the peccary, the javelinas, after they had maybe disappeared. And she narrates how she sang this song. And then I won't break the suspense on it, but watch carefully what happens, uh, because it's also quite important to add to our discussion of the disappearance of species. This video is a little longer. It's eight minutes, but please watch carefully the subtitles. And then we'll open up uh, for a discussion with um, our Amazonian narrators on those um, 
three um, videos or testimonies. So now we could have uh, the one by Delicia uh, Dawa, please. Elias Andi Niwagara Nyukata Nyukaachi Paimara Sinji Runa Oshushi Niwara Kang Wakcha Tukusha was Sapalya Tukusha Tiarisha was Sachama Puringanira Ilang Kuti Maita Seringanira Ilang Shuk Parti Taringanira Ilang Shamunganira Chai Bikanga Sapalya Tiarisha Wasi Tiarisha Kantasha Kanga Wanganata Kayana Mangi Niwara Chiga takingi nira chitpai ba takita. Takik piga wangana ga iskai punjale me kalpa mungani shanir. Ari nira ni nyuka. Yacharani nyuka chi nyuka. Achiwa mbaska wasagmani. Chiga yachachiwara. Ayawaska topisha. Kantasha kasna takita uya chingi nisha. Sikwanga was chung, 
Akan gau bas chum. Cibi. Nya chi orang mana cium pueblo ini saya ni sa. Tuari lo cuit tanjiran. Ima tak tu kura kai sacha kai. Dia unas tu kush tanjiran. Ima silang tanjiran mana icha rasa sa pai bah. Konan. Habis kaman garau tanjiran. Sir tu cang ni sa. Ni pai cinggal tanjiran. Tapi nyuka kau sah tanjiran. Konan nyuka. Taki sa kaman garau tanjiran. Asi wang guna, pai guna ya, kamu kaya awang cikang guna jas, nanti nyuka jas nik pi. Nyuka kari asis seki mang, harubin. Ayah was kata ya nusha, kui cipai ga borlawang nyuka ta. Delis ya ga, kantak mang, mana ni, mana asin nak kai ga, mana asin nak cang ni, mana cheese ti cang ni si niran. Kai ga, si tono tak kaya nama niran. Cai bimi, nyuka kono ngan nyus kasi nak takiran. Kantas kawas ya ka, kayaan di tuta mana kata tu dilo coba. Kucai anjelung kau adi punya panji ni sam ni. Egarik, wah ilah pawai adi rangsai, ilah pawai adi. Mata si ilah pun, wagrata cuci ilah pun. Ini ima ima si ilah ramai ice mana tiara cuci. Cas nai, apa mora? Wangana tawan cia berak kurugu tak kamas kata tawan cia apa mora? Shuk samal tata tawan cia kai cuci tadi siapa mora? Kai ga panji ni sam ni, si tak samor. Cega cita cici ganja somak pun jaga ganja somak caki ceranci, pikaranci, masa mora guna tak katu guna teras ni kuranci, punyuranci, punyuskai, pun dah samora nyukac, eliasan di samor, cewa saya di kupi bentora samor, nyukak kompak di mana? Paiwas wanyuska, ah aw, wanyuska paiwas, cai samor, cini wara, usu cini wara. Imangawa takanga, cita ga takiran ginyuara. Imangawa, kang mana takina caran ginyuara, mana kaila ta pinyawanau. Cuma anda bintura samu ginyuara, kumari ginyuara. Kanga mana kai bitian awal mican ginyuara, kanga sinji awal mimang ginyuara. Kai bi mana tiang ginyuara. Kai ga kanda pinyasha. Kan bayi juga nata pinya setiak runa guna, pukaya ku guna, tukui guna, kai mami tak setiak guna, au ka guna tukui. Ciwang kan nata wanci sya pai naga mana, kai nata wanci sya muntal bu magarandi, cisha tukui pai guna kuli kisha tiang guna. Kan daga pinya guna mana purin, cias nai kan kan tangi nyuar, i manggawa tak kan tangi nyuar, kunang manda. Ama kantangi cinyuara nyuka sakira nyira India ikuska menyawin jisha cita kunangga kangkas nataki skawan kaiwan kaiwan ganaga kai India si kamu ska makunang bultiaring nyuara bultiaring nyira kas nama nyawi yang nyira kuna kaiwan India ikuska mara jisha kusia saki saki kaskau nacas na borohoga jasa saki kaskau na ama ama aite luksiri cunisha Cita minyak. Ah, kas nama nya via cik pika mana digresak pika nya aje mana tiaga sekali lagi kas. Cita mi cita kita nyuka cikan tas kawa tu taki skawang mi pay bolteriska. Cimanda mi cimuskui bini kata pinya wano. Cai bipinya cikayan diri kunaga sugla tawan cimuskan orang nya cimanda nya cimang nyuka syamuskan nya syamuk nya cimanda kunaga mana mana cita kita nu tak mana ni ko nang kai bikan niu pikai bi taki sekarang tu ya cius kan ni nyuka cias nama cie as you can see that that video is quite emotional for our two of our narratives because it's talking about the death of their father but it's quite a to me quite moving that song Delicia had learned was to call the peccaries. She sang it once and she never sang it again because they told her in a dream that the conditions were not right for the peccaries anymore in that place. And that these two old singers who had passed away had set their faces towards the west so that they, all the herds would go inside the mountains from which they would not return because if their, their time for their living in this world is threatened by people uh, killing them off to sell them meat, et, et cetera. Um, so now I'd like to open this uh, for people who might want to ask questions. Um, I guess I should, should first 
ask if the narrators want to say anything. Elodia o Belgica Kanguna Munangiche Yamsa Quentangaka y Video Manda o Paiguna Preguntara Charienga y Chari Munangiche Quentangawa o Su Comentario Rangawa. Elodia o Belgica Munangiche. Y mangaba o. Y mató no manda cuenta no está tan bien. Ay, y mara y alguien que cae video manda cae. Elige arrimas cara. Ah. Ah, no cae digo ya pasa que ya quemar. Lydia says she's, she feels quite sadness thinking about her father. But um, I think if anyone would like to have a question or, or would like to uh, respond um, to these um, thoughts about the disappearance of animals, all the way from uh, Laura Tohi's poem to these examples of the disappearance of animals, um, please um, just unmute your mic and ask the question if you'd like to or given an observation. Bali kakang munangi ansa rimanga kai manda. Nyoka nyoka parti manda. Inda. Porque kai imasti sacha aicha taka yanga waka chasna rukuguna katakisha. Buruhuas Kayauska Nik Makano Kaywangana Takitaga. Ah, Chita Quintaga Gana Rachana Takik Pishi Mana Chi Wangana Tia Kashkamanda Vasca Shamu Ganganis. Well, like I said, that's, that's an example of the kind of song that you don't hear so much anymore, but that uh, have the power to call the peccaries out of the mountains. Um, um, Todd, yes. I'd like to ask a question. Um, the animals that are locked up now in the mountains, um, besides the songs bringing them back, would there be anything else that could bring them back from the mountains? Mm -hmm. Yeah. pung imachari rukuguna nya. Tapasca churanum ya animal guna, urku qui, ya indi ikuskai. Ipaiguna tapaita pung nyukanchi, um, imas nara rangaranchi paiguna chi animal guna, kuti, kuti, ya yuxi chingawa, yama, paiguna kuti, puringaho, pai, kuti data paina pascapia. Paina tapasca tapasca, pina satanu pancha, talla tapa ganchi chasna tapa no payam, paitas. Aha. Pero you can see Imas nara rangaranchi o paiguna Imachari, you can see mana animal guna wani chick piga o mana yapa bullera rakpi o imara yapata uyarik piga pai cachari paiba paibak paga. Acharik pe ashka luxinga chiga. Si pay mitasha mana paskan. Tapasha la charing. She says that that they have them closed inside of there because there's so much just noise and so much um, um, just people around that they need their. Uh, empty space and quiet. Um, and then if that space were there, they would let them out again. Um, Don Pedro has a very interesting story of his father killing a lead peccary and where they, he planted the head of the peccary facing the sun so that it would call the peccaries back 
And even though the peccaries in our area have disappeared, they come back every few years because of that. Don Pedro, mana aska tiempo charinche pero kan ansa cuentangi kambayaya y mas nara tarpuka chi wangana uma paiwa amo uma. Anya. Em, que wangana manda cuita que cierto wangana ruanyo chicha paiwa amo ruanyo chicha al pei pamba maga pai. Y singa ra uma racha. Pai chi singa a nyu kaya ni ha chi singa paiwa por meta ni chi. Si va pa Sirisha, pa va por meta va caer tu nisha. Si caer fe, pa na uyasha, si que la nunca ni se puede pillar. Si na ni se casa me conas que pa es amo no raspi pactamu, pactamu y mana aska ma chamos ansale. De no ser pactamu ursa. Si na fe niu can si en si cierto pa es una rupu una rimasca. Cierto man si pamba na ni no ha que si umar se hingar a umaras pa va por meta. Si pa va por meta Pai wa singa ima pura ima pura ma luxing o ima pura ma tarpuskan. Ayu ke tarpuka riku tu sih singa awo maras. Singa awo maras ari. Sebi umar. Indi luxina pura ma o yaikuma pura ma. Mana? Kay urai pura ma nyai tu sih mi pai ga pambahaka urai pura manda. Pai jauh sih kay nyukan si umal yang di jauh sih pai ga urai ma. Master Singara Churasha, Pambahki, Pai Chishukor Meta Quinta, Uya Chikpiga, Pai Shamu Chishurai Puraman. In the song that you heard, Delicia sang about the master of the peccaries will come with his red trumpet and wearing his red flag like beads. And those are references uh, to singing in um, beauty or metaphors about the peccary because they have kind of reddish fur in the light and and the lead animal uh, calls out and it sounds like a trumpet. And so the idea is there that there's a man coming who's part peccary who has this sort of trumpeting sound, this red trumpet and red uh, beads hung on his around his neck. And, um, and Pedro says that his father once shot a lead peccary and he buried its head because its, its, its face, its head is the trumpet. And he buried this facing east, facing down river from which the peccary come. When they go into the mountains, of course, they go in to the west and then they come around and come back uh, out of the east. and. Um, so he says, even now, even though there are very few peccary, um, every couple of years, a few stray peccary come back uh, and they're being called by that trumpet that's sticking out of the earth from where he buried uh, the head of the peccary. Um, mm. Would anyone else like to respond to those um, comments or ideas? I'd like to say just one other thing. Yeah, sure. um, in our Navajo Diné belief, we believe that animals um, portend or they give, they behave in ways that are prophetic. And um, I remember my mother used to talk about how she said when, and she was calling, she says, the end of the world, you know, whatever that means. She said, at the end of the world, she said that um, animals that were once thought extinct would come back. And I've heard that um, in the news lately, you know, I hear every once in a while, an animal that had been extinct for some time has now come back. And I wondered if um, the people from the Amazon also have those beliefs and if they if they also believe that animals can um, portend the future, or you know, in some way, telling humans of what events um, might come or might happen. Yeah, could you could you say that last sentence again, Laura? Yeah, I was just wondering if they have similar stories about animals 
behavior indicating that something is going to come to pass. That yeah. They're making some prophetic statement for humans mm -hmm. uh, to notice. Mm -hmm. So I was just wondering if they had those kinds of yeah. stories or I, not. Uh, Finding pai wa runa costumbre o kui animal guna mai kangang nya tapia cuenta i pai guna mai kambi nya si animal guna ansa rimanung mai muskuiri o pai wa mai kambi tapian i mara tukunga o mundo tukuringa o i mara tukunga i mai kambi su profecia cuenta ang my can be sure, yeah, only chingarisca animal, cutidara, samu, uh, or cultima leara ricurin, by mana ricusca animal, yeah, only mana ricusca, only chingarisca, my can be, uh, conga manda ricurin, e su nyalia tapia cuenta man, e paiguna ni non paiguna traducin, tradicion o qui, yeah, mundo tu curiscai, animal guna cuti. Y tigramunga me can. Sinapi tapung kanguna. Kangunara y masnara. Ningit chimanda. Nyoka partimanda chi tapia ninchi nyokanchi. Chiga punja cantasha tapia anchi. Pai y masachi shivi canta kachiga mana tapia chan. Chi chau pi punja canta pisco chiga pai cantan manchi mana canta. Cantausha chi tapia an. Chiga chasna nyanchi. She, she said it's that in our tradition, um, sometimes there are birds, and if, when they sing at their right time, like early in the morning or the afternoon, it's a, it's a, you know it's normal. But if they sing outside of their time, like in the middle of the day when you never hear them, that's a sign that something is going to happen. Um, um, I'm not sure if they quite got the idea of the prophecy, but there's certainly the idea, and we'll see this in the video uh, that's coming, that the animals will come back at some time. Um, in 1994, I got to be uh, work with Vindaloria at the University of uh, Colorado in Boulder uh, for a year. I was up there. And he had a conference uh, which brought together traditional people and scientists on this idea of the restoration of the animals. There's an interesting conflict there because there was the same, same idea that the buffalo had been taken inside. Um, and there were some people who wanted to just sort of bring the buffalo back. And there are other traditional people who said, no, that can't happen until the time is right and the people or, or the owner of the buffalo from inside lets them out. It was a kind of an interesting uh, debate that's in my mind as we do this. Um, we can't, there's nothing on the scale of what uh, he did there, but nevertheless, it's similar question of what can we do to bring back the animals and their different scientific and also native ideas on that. Um, so, So here's a question I would like to just read here, maybe for the panelists. Um, and I wonder if maybe you could just put the question, Bron, uh, Taylor, and then there's, uh, could you just read your question? Bron is there. Sure. Um, we turn your video on too. Here we go. Uh, well, I was just saying that, I'm not sure I understand well what it is that they attribute the disappearance to. If it's in part the lack of silence, I think that's one of the things I heard, to what do they attribute that loss? Um, and are there a number of other factors that, that they weave into their understandings? And are there uh, ritual other, or other means that the community or perhaps religious specialists are using to try to bring them back? Or is it perhaps as, took place in the case with Vine um, and the people he was in conversation with, that it's really not something that we can affect. Um, it's just something that has to take its own time. Yeah. 
It's interesting to me in, in Pedro's video, um, kind of point out there, he said that, that there were so many pacas there because their master had them there and at, the, at the salt lick. And really also this is a doorway into the mountain where they would come in and go out. People would sometimes shoot five of them in a night. So it's, he talks about over hunting. And he also talks about the fact of, you know, something more that, that if somebody even touched the water out of curiosity there where they drank, um, it, would, it, would, it would cause them to go away. And then we can think in scientific terms about overhunting or maybe just even touching animals so that they don't smell. But the difference here, I think, is that there is a, there's, there's this guardian or master or leader of the animals who, um, who feels hurt, especially if animals are wounded. He gets sad and he wants to take care of his animals and he takes them out of circulation completely. And Pedro said in that video that to us, this, this, uh, th there's nothing wrong with this salt lick. It looks open. It looks like, why wouldn't they come back and start using this? Said, but their guardian has put an invisible door there, closed it off so that they can't come in or out of there anymore. And it's taken them away to another place. So uh, I think sometimes, uh, you know, there's something kind of, some of those explanations are ones that scientists would agree with, but there's also this notion um, that, that we don't manage the forest. The forest manages itself. It has these sort of, mm, these, these, these beings that are the owners of the animals that, uh, and the earth that's alive that sort of resist. Um, and, and they will go gradually disappearing or sort of taking their animals away, away, away as the earth ages, and then another world will emerge. So I think the idea would be that you could slow this down or you could bring them back in some kind of way by, by you know, giving more space, um, shooting less, wounding less, et cetera. And we'll see this more in another video that we're going to show. Um, but, but the general trajectory that the, that the world is aging, and eventually as the world ages, the animals will be withdrawn is something, um, you know, which is kind of, th th you, you can't really, you can go back and forth a little bit, but it's going towards that path of the disappearance of the animals, I think. Um, I'd, I'd like to just, we've got a couple of other uh, questions here that I'd just like to get out on the floor and then we can ask them. And, and also some of them will be asked, be, be answered in, in the video we'll show next. But Anna, uh, could you ask yours? Yeah, Fisk. hello. Um, yeah. Hi. Um, I'm not a musicologist, so I probably don't, I don't know the right terminology for this, but I was very um, struck, I was very impressed by the kind of the music of Delicia's songs, the song for the peccary and the song for the, the little toucans. And I wondered if there's an affinity, like a similarity between how the songs sound between their music and the particular animals or, or birds that, that, they're, that they're too that they're singing to. Mm. Yeah. Tapungarauni, uh, Belsika, Tapungarauni Kanda. By Yapa Gustan Kambatia, Delicia Pai Kantaskara, I Pai Tapung, uh, Chi Tuno Kanto, mm, Ang, my Manda Shamung Chikanto, Chikanto, my Kambi, uh, Animal canto sino ang o pisco canto sina o wangana pai ui achiscara sina ang o o mai manda samunchi musica. Chita ka ikara tapai cantas kama o man na iangalia canta na chang chiga. Ikang ya changi kambas ya changi chi ikaraguna. Ikaragunta mana mana ikara kiken da ganyu kanchi ya chak chas kanchi. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. My manda, I must not a yachanunchi i caraguna. I carataga rukuguna, cantasha, paiguna. We are chiska, the paiguna yachano. Well, she says that that's not an ordinary song. That's a song that's called an ikara, which is a, um, 
it, it, it's a it's a song that creates a kind of an affinity with animals or has a power to call that you don't just sing for no reason. Um, and she she says that those songs have to be given to you um, by somebody who owns them and maybe is a powerful person from the past that gives them to you. Um, so I, I don't think she's directly, I don't know, I couldn't get a direct answer, but that's a really interesting question to me. Um, and I think when we get to Janice Knuckles' presentation, um, the idea of the idiophones and all these, there's many kinds of ways in which Quechua language uh, 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 seeks to evoke the sounds of nature, including in singing. Um, and uh, Chris, could you read your song also? Are you, are you, I mean, your question also, so we could get it out there? Yeah. Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, so I was just asking, when the animals are taken to the forest, can they ever come back again? Um, or is this once they're kind of locked up by the masters, is that the end of the story, perhaps in the context of extinction? Um, but more, I'm curious about, you know, is this permanent or are there examples they know of where the animals have come back before? Yeah. Shinji Bruko, Shinji Ruku, Yatiani Banguna, Tapanya, my Paibana, Mas Shamuchung Nicha. Ya Ushang Ushang Chiani Malguna Kuti Shamungawa, O Kantak Pishamung Shamunga, O Ima Ima Tukunga, porque Delicia Kantaka, Sinakliera Musquivi, Ventura, Nika Mana, Mana Sina Kantangi. Mm. Yeah, she says that although the old people have died, they're still alive in the other world. And that um, they have locked those in the animals inside and, and that's why they get angry if they're called back because even if somebody might be able to force them back with a song that it's not the right time for them to come back. Um, I think we probably need to move to the next um, video at this point because of our time. But I, I do think that people keep do keep singing and, and with the idea of bringing them back. And, and it's sort of something which is being sort of worked out in real time. When animals do come back, I think one of the problems, uh, I remember a taper came back in our area after there weren't any. And um, the idea there, a person... Uh, related to us, uh, my brother-in-law, in fact, shot the taper some time ago on the idea that if it did come back, it was it was like a gift that the mountains were opening up and giving to that person that one should accept, which is kind of a difficult um, to, to connect with uh, maybe ecological notions of of you know the the last of some species that are in an area, um, but. Uh, Okay, let, let's let's move on to the next video, um, which is Delicia's video, and maybe right after. And this is a kind of a longer video, but she talks about here um, the animals first being taken out of circulation by their amus, but then how they will disappear from the world altogether, and eventually, uh, when the new world emerges, they'll come back. And um, so. Um, we have, this is a longer video, but watch carefully. Um, it's, it's about 12 minutes, I think, but also watch carefully the, the subtitles and it'll answer some of these questions. Yeah. 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 
Chingaringafnia Caliarino. Nakpi, I must not a ricongi chi animal guna chingaris commanda. Chingaris commanda. A ricongi. I don't know one chi by amo ukuma pakan, chirai kunya wing to kurishka shina to kui caliari. Nya imagine the nishangi, new kachenya, atalata ashka tacharima. Win anga miku kalari pi, suma guasitarasha, suma tapasha churaima, nyamana kanjama purinao chumisha. Chas na queen talata, pai amuga, nyayapa chingari kalari no pi, tapasha churashka, asha mana ricurin pagalam. Sinak pi, sina kalari pi, masnara rasum, masnara nya paiguna, mana tu qui animal guna chinga chitum. Mana chinga mana chingari chingaringa chu. Chasna leita pai amunya mi chasha mi chasna apam winga. Mm ui baum pai amuga chasla shalata yapa ashkaruna yapa ilya papi shukpiga ungurisha pakirisha chasna tarikusha amulya kisha nyama na kacharin chasna sha pai suma ganya sir kasha uiba. Kuti kacharinga o mama. Nya mana mana runa uyarisha mana yapakta runa ilapa uyarik piga nya pai amu kacharinga nyari kung mana piwas wan chikpi pai amu kacharing kutlata ukuma shamu pita pang chana chari nya kuti yapa ilapas kaguna mana wanyo shap ungu shapakta pi pai amu yakiri shaga nya mana kachari imara tukunga kuna Aska runa. Aska runa mira risha nya. Wanchi kaleno pi, wanchi kaleno pi. Pai amu apa sharinga shuparti tari nasha ga ring anchurin chimanda. Nya ringa pai winga uibata pasha. Pero, cierto shuparte ma apanga, suna kiliera kuna, tu kui parte na sata kinga rina nya kaliarin. Hasta... Peru, Peru, Yaktai, Nyamasurama, Peor, Mas, Gente, Tian, Una, Nya, Carretera, Nya, Shamon. Payam, Nya, Maikan, Ang, Sachusha, Gnaya, Alipay, Bipaktasha, Tapasha, Charinga, Shupunja, Kacharin, Tapam, Shupunja, Kacharin, Chasna, Uibanga, Mana, Kacharishkalya, Uibanga, Rao. Paya mo niya yachang kuti wan chinga yapa wan chinga rong guna chiga niya tapas sa churang mikuna takara paya mo uibang paya mo mana kas na kacharis ka niya uibang na tausang mana chusha gawa na piwas aron na mana tias kay si na pay kay sugo ima tuno puma nukanchat na tami ko chas na kuinta na tapay amo ka musiasya tapas sa uibang Kuti amu mau cerai ku laki saya jasnar. Ada. Nya mundo tu kurina mariunya mundo tu kuriska i mara tu kongga cie animal guna. Cie animal animal guna ga nya cie runa guna wanci saya mikus kaga kau saring gani gana nya alipat tu kuriska ibi. Nya runa runa nyau pa nyau pa nyau pa nyukancis ilas ke ilas ke tempu ibi. Wanyo guruna kau saringa ni ganau cias nak kuin tajat. Ani malbas kau saringa payinya kay alpa tu kuris kunga kalya iskay. Cian nani seri magas kau nani kan ceru kuna mana winya wanyo gacu kau saringa ni. Mundo tu kuris kay ikuti pay si nyau pa nyau pa ru kuna pay was kuti samupi. Imas narang gacu mundo nyu kan si mundo sina. Nyu kan si Kai kau sahaja mundu ini agar orang hari kau pegang sugu yuya yuguru nasi samun kani kan? Ya pa ni nai biru pa setias kasha mana kai nyukan cicina leta yuya yuka samun kaju sugu yuya itu cari orang ambil pakta samun kani sepuh ini tegas kau nani pan ceru kuguna? Ya pa ali yuya yuwa oh imas nasi samun? Ya pa ali yuya yuk mana nyukan cicina toru paru yuya i? I cioras alpa Sina tapas kanga aska aska runa o mas pisi runa sa mga kwa? Ali alma yuka kutis bultia mong gami ning kay alipama. Mana ali alma yuka sakiring gami ning ninyin alayita.
Kaudi kupi nyau pauras kuenta anganya aska lugar tianga nya alpa. Kan tianga mana mana cintiro kai wing alilia yuya yu mana tianchi cokai mundo ibi. Ya pemai kanga ya pakta iriza yuya yu pas tianchi kai mundo ibi. Ruku kuna taka ari magas kau na nyukanchi ya ya nyukanchi apa mama cias na nisha nyukanchi tadi mai tuku garanchi nisha kuinta itu ku garanchi nyukanchi tadi. Shamunga kai mundo ma wing runa pero cias ayas mana ya pakta aska katianga cuning pas karuna mi uti kai mundo ma bulte mo na katianga nisha di maska. Di kang di kupi shamu mundo i sinal dia katianga animal duenyo runa. Kuti animal taka mai kanda ka angga mikus kariung mai kanga runa wancis kariung paywas cikar runa wancis kari saya kuti runa cekau saya untuk kuti cakap wancis aku kuri tak ya nasi paywas cikar runa wancis kagun aku buat ke munga orang guna kai melayat. I samu mundui karang animal paywa amut tiangga. Paya muka tiangga mi imat teman tiangga perkenya kai mundui bi kau saksi nala tiangga nyiskan. Nisha kuin sa kanang rin niya. Sa mga mundo sinalyaran. Uro ko kuwi tiyanga tiyanga raong niya. Uro ko kuwi tiyanga niya kutipay ka pa ikaw sa shka sinalya ka o sangga ni siya munga. Sinagpi kangi kulpi niya mundo tukuriska ka tukurina ka ma rikpi ka niya pisiyanga 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 animal ko na porke duenyo niya puha ka chingga pa ikaw. Isa chingga rin siya kuin ta niya chira ko taruko ko na niya gano. Nya pakasha ukuma 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 imasi ima pesir kata rasa unda cingam kacikan ni masih entar panjai puru pita tupa shuman tupa jujur kusapi paywasi ukuma curah seka serka curah seka tiok tak jasna sya ni mal tukuring ni nya mana tiang jin cemana perpay amu apa sya biolog guna mana nong nya plan de maneko curangga karang teritoriu kui saya kuti caring apa plan de maneko wa guna sinaljara kang di kupeti plan de maneko guna exito cari cari nongga o o yang gasina ranong porke duanya guna pay pay wamuna wa kacinga i cinga di sharinga mana wancik pika payamu kasih dari ku enggak ya kuti pay mana wancik nau pika ya pay pui nau cuma ni si pay ta unggu si saya ilya pas ke samu ni kan jatuh leminta waktu ke pakiri si caki samu mah cita si mana gus tak nau pay ku nau samu jangan pakiri si ke samu mesin tamas ke kacari cuma ni si kanya tapa si curan nau mana unggu ri cuma ni si cuma unggu ri si kata si mana gus tak nau Nyukai tak cakap ni siapa musuh cium ni kakak re. Amigo, orang cinta mana sih aga? Ali apa pun tak sih, ilya apa sih? Buku nampas. Ali dari ku sih sih tak sih. Orang cinta siapa anggi apa usaha? Ba? Tak kis pici sih unggu cipa anggi mana sih siri mau kang ni kakak re. Pai musuh ini. Kasih ni siri magmang amu ba. Ya kigmang pai wibat ni kakak re nyukawan nyukai ya kak. Sinaksi. Ali Ali si takpi imana aska si takpi paguna nya kasi di konga. O sea, ima chari su ali plan de manejo tiakpi i chi plan raigo mana tanto wanyu chinong nya ansalya ansalya i alira apuntasha si takpi ga duenyo guna nya kasi di konga. Inda ya kasi di konga chika kuti aska ui ba nya Yuk sih kak ku inta me pai je, sasa i cakap cikak, pai guna ganya, mira um ini nama mana mira um jupe pai, amu kaca riska, puri um guna, cik mana ya pak tau um gucik pi pai amu kasi dari pai puri nau jones. Kuna ai cawa mana ku inta sen, ai cawa ansa difisil mana porke pai guna, karu puri nungnya urama. Urama nya paywa lolonga churanong ima chari Peru partiman wasa paywa tiempo partapi sikanong nya kum ima chari Peru partui ya pakta aisakpi o veno chura veneno da churakpi ga manasikanga kuenta Ma chiga manasikanga chukukuri amanda sa Kutilah tabul tegang orang ia tak tanya kanoi. 
Chirai kota meniga ganau ya amarun si kamu pisi si kamu gang ya kuai caganisha. Amarun si punda gang pun si kamu gawak. Cici amarun bisi cupari munau kai karni rusina niga nau kubona. Bayai cai bisi lutari nau tapi 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 kai masih ta. Ama si karuya ibu lutari sya muka gang cipu inter si amarun bika kiti di sya kai guna gang. Si kamu nau amarun punda ya muskai. Ya saya ni syarikat kubu nak kuih tengah nak citas. Si nak pika atau ngamarung wanya cik pika mana si kanga? Kuti mana ya cerai kuta me? Cil bagri imastika i cila piskato askasi kau sekali gak manja nama. Bay amun je si kamu mana ni syarikat kubu nak ni kanau citas. Pika amarung gak cil piskato askau tapi saya ni utaga. Mikunga minisha chita suru kukuna gari magagana wa yapa Ashka sika ushka ibiko mana yapa kita kila china pae Amundi shi punta ya unishu Pae mihano uras pisi sika mchi amaru nga mana yanga yanga ka mana Mihano ash ka yanga Ura ima ganya ka ima isti ima tata nishka unge yanga Uru manga ya kai awata salta risha sika Yang kai, ini mata ni sekarang dia sara tayaku itu toksik di rumah macam kasna kuin tapi sekarang tu, saltari sekarang tu, dia tayaku malah kasanya yang gas, cemil rumah ngan ini ini masih, tapi sekarang tu awak tak saltari sekarang dia tayaku malah kasna, ini mirip pun agak ni kanau, kasna dia uskai ibiga amarun di miri upaya amun di ni sekarang cium cupa di sekarang ini, kasna ini masih tanya sekarang dia kan masih tak tatu kau pisi. Awak tak salta di sana, dia tak imas di sana. Ya, mulai terlihat dari sharing ini kemakan orang kubur nak apa itu nak. Jika nak orang kubur nak kuih tak itu kau hajar nyokan kita cakap sendiri sharing itu kau garansi. Ya, sahaja manja net, tapi macam sahaja usaha juga mana. Imas laru ya na, laru ya. Kau am asal ni kau itu kau ni cik kangkun atau ni itu kau garansi. I kau na igual si kangkun na oh nyawa pemas amarung mas si kanauka. Amarung aku nang uras kai imas di mana kai jadi kamu ni siapa inta ya kau inta mana orang nak kau nang wajah kai nya pasak semana ya mana kai ya imas di aska si kamu mihano piskado ni si kikin agustu kila mana si kamu raku nang kai november kila tanya si kamu ni naura aska si kamu ni siapa inta nang ima ima rasu si nang unaya ka Pai masina tu kosha washayara pai guna ni saga mas ti peruan wui bisi tu bias ka petroleum ni naura cidai ko caman jadi saya suparti ma tan dari saya sayari saya ciman daran di kuti nya si kanga kalari naura. Okay, I'd like to just put the there's a next one minute one that I think is quite dramatic on the return of the animals and then we'll be done with the videos. Um, we could just put that one on right now, Joe. Tukui nyaupa rukuguna wanyukuna. Paiguna wanyuchiska animal guna. Paiguna wanyuchiska mono guna wangana guna. Kutsa munga? Nyukanchi chinga ishka washaga painaran jatari nasha. Painaran jatari nasha na uruna. Animal tu kuya teringgalan guna nyukan cerangji, bukan kau sekali. Nyukan ceri, nyak kutila ter kalari sih na wanyu itu kupi kasti guta kacarik pi nyukan cerangji, hari sumpai na rangji kau seringgal na tu kuya animal rumah kau seringgal nyukan cerangji kau minyak ikara sih. Just na ni kan cita. Ima tu no animal kau sering. Nyawi animal nyawi wanyu cicak guna ni tu kui tami kui wanyu cicai guna tapi guna tapi na taring kau na ya cie. Nyu guna waswi, ataring kau nyu kanceran juga nyu kal kau sakar. Mai masa kiri cie. Nau koma. Alpa bul taring ka? Ima sara bul taring. Koti nyu kancaya ya ya cie di kas na rurang kan nyu kancit tala kal kau sakar na kan cie. Di no bengkir ya iku no sanci. Ima ini tali papu yang sekali, awin, awin toko kan, cai bisi nak cai ling ling ring sumi anu kan cikgu, anda cikgu payah naran di luar sini.
Thank you. Um, we're going to have to move on to our uh, next presentation fairly soon. But one thing that really strikes me um, is at least some, some similarities, maybe rough similarities to the North American context. There's the idea of a, of a new world coming when we come, when this world goes inside. Um, and there's an idea of a new world that comes that's like the old one, where there be fewer people with, who, who will hunt. Um, it's not like they will, will stop hunting the animals. There'll be more animals, but people maybe won't wound them or will live better in relation to these animals and the animal masters. Uh, but I, I, I'd like to just ask uh, Laura, um, what similarities you might see with uh, the Navajo tradition? I know you also have a series of worlds uh, there, but I wonder what similarities you might see there. I think you're you're um, you're muted, but you're there. Yeah. I think I'm okay now. I think that for Diné people, the Navajo people, um, we've always had these beliefs that each world that we lived in or that we encountered, and we're saying that now we are in the fifth world that when these worlds end or quote end, whatever that means, it could be maybe it's just meaning that a new kind of world is coming. But I think in each of these worlds that we live through from the first, second, third, fourth, and they say now we are in the fifth world, this is the Navajo belief, that in every world, animals were already there before the humans were. So it's almost like the animals were the ones to go ahead of the humans and make that world habitable. And then the humans came later on after uh, that world was made habitable. And the thing that really struck me about these, these stories is that it was actually the humans that, um, that destroyed, in a sense, their place in that world by the disharmony and disagreements and breaking moral laws. And it was because of that, the animals um, so would expel the humans or some catastrophe would happen and the humans would have to leave and they would go to the next world again. So it seems like there's that similarity about worlds, you know, and um, there's a, the question about what's gonna happen in this next world are we going to be able to um, be an improved version of ourselves, you know, as human beings? Um, but I brought this book. I just wanted to show you this one's uh, photo. I, don't, I hope you can see it, but let's see. Yeah, there's, this is a, a drawing by a Navajo artist. I don't know, you can't see that too well, but down here are is water. And this is the creation story of how humans emerged into the present world. But this is all water down here and there's a turkey down here. And then right in the middle are humans and right above that are all the animals. And then up here at the very top is the insect. And it was actually this little insect that was the first one to emerge into the world. And he um, made the world safe. Um, so I think there's those similarities of these animals have a special place mm. that, you know that they have their own way of doing things um i also think there's a similarity of you know animal humans are especially in, in this this drawing i just showed you the humans are not the ones that are leading the animals it's the animals leading the humans mm. So I think there's a, a great reverence for animals and the roles that they play in our ceremonies. And even in like, for example, my clan, I'm a maternal grandmother clan, grandfather clan is the Coyote Pass people. Mm. So these animals have a lot to do with creation. They have a lot to do with um, living a life that, you know, we could emulate, you know. Um, so in the Navajo tradition, the coyote, for example, is one of these animals that's both trickster and creator. 
and he's responsible for creating the universe by his own uh, curiosity and ineptitude. Um, so those animals are always respected and they play a role in, in, our, in our, some of our sacred ceremonies too. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's some of the, what I'm getting from the people in the Amazon is that these animals are important and they should be respected. They should not be killed off. They should not be you know, decimated that we need to respect them as human beings because they are equal inhabitants of this planet. And we also need to take care of them as much as we can. Yeah. One of the similarities that I noticed to that is that in, in the Amazon also, the animals are moral and cultural. Pedro has a story about how birds can lie if they want to uh, and, or tell the truth if they want to. Uh, and there's also the idea that through the actions of animals in the beginning, um, the world comes into being. But I think another similarity is what you said about the coyote is that many of those actions are, are sometimes sort of <laughs> accidental or things done by curiosity or just, um, you know, not necessarily the plan of an all, you know, perfect architect at the beginning, but just things that happen, uh, you know, and when the coyotes uh, activities and so on. I think we, we need to move because of our time and then we're gonna come back, I think if we have time, but let's move to Janice and then Elizabeth, and then uh, we'll use the time that we have um, after their presentations. Uh, so Janice, welcome. And one of the things that's been so great about working with Janice Knuckles, she is a professor of linguistics at BYU who's worked in the Ecuadorian Amazon since the 80s. And um, she is, I think, uh, probably, I think she's one of the, she's certainly the best linguist working on uh, Ecuadorian Quechua, but um, uh, and the Amazon. But what's really great, I think, about her work is that she's also very interested in uh, the Quechua social relations in nature and uh, works on how language and poetics and idiophones capture the Quechua attitude and way of thinking about nature um, and often allowing nature to speak in their speech. So welcome, uh, Janice, and um, uh, go thank right you, ahead. Thank you, thank Todd. You. Um, so I would like to show a PowerPoint. Do I have the ability to share the screen? I think so. Can you, okay. can you so, just share screen at the bottom? I see a share screen. Okay. okay. Let me post disabled participant screen sharing. Mm, okay. Uh, okay. 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 Okay, wonderful. Let me get this up here. Yes, okay. Sorry, I'm a little bit getting my act together here. Um, first of all, thank you so much, Todd, for your very generous introduction. Thank you so much, Laura, for your stunning poem. Um, um, Pagarachuni. También a Luisa Cadena, Nuka Nuka Iriag Amiga, Mana Mana Kaipi Tiang, Pero Yapa Paitariakini. My friend Luisa Cadena, whose video we have seen her, um, we've seen her just now in the last video. She's she can't be here, but I really love love her a lot. She's been a great friend to me. Um, I thank Pagarachuni Beli Kadawa, Pagarachuni Elodia, Pagarachuni Pedro. Pagarachuni David, um, anyway, I'm just thanking all these people. A big thank you to Todd uh, for, for being the fantastic ethnographer and videographer uh, who is always the best sounding board for any idea that any anyone might have. If you have an interesting idea, Todd will, um, will help you think through it. So thank you, Todd. Um, okay, so I am very interested in, I'm very focused on these words that linguists call idiophones, okay? These are words that are imitative. We have them in every language of the world. 
they exist in Navajo, they exist in um, so many languages, right? And I'm interested in the ways in which idiophones interact with animism and with uh, a concept that you've all probably heard of, the concept of mindfulness, okay? So I think idiophones are a very mindful way of speaking, and I think, um, let me explain a little bit. So you could think of mindfulness generally as paying attention to anything with, with focus, okay? And not being judgmental. So whatever comes into your mind um, and you just experience it, that's the act of mindfulness, okay? Uh, not many people have talked about my mindful language usage. A lot of people think mindfulness is just like in your head. It's, it has to do with you know, not saying anything. It has to do with just thinking or observing or being aware. But I think um, teacher people have a very mindful way of speaking involving these sound imitative words, okay? And these are words like, well, you heard some of them when Belika was speaking. <clears throat> she talked about the, <clears throat> sorry, the sound of fish, lots and lots of fish rising up in the water um, as they were traveling upriver with their anaconda guardian spirit or their anaconda guardian. Okay, so these, these sound imitative, some people call them onomatopoeia. I like to say onomatopoeia because I think they're very poetic. These kinds of words, I think, are very mindfully grounded, okay? Idiophones, as I said, are words that focus on sensory perceptions, uh, as well as emotions, as well as inner sensations in the body. So you could say proprioception as well. Um, and I think, I think these kinds of imitations display a heightened sensitivity to the immediacy of people's experiences, okay? And then just for definition purposes, so everybody knows where I'm coming from, I define animism as any belief, action, or attitude which engages with non-humans as living entities with their own perspectives and communicative abilities, okay? And I think that an animistic worldview uh, lays the groundwork for these idiophones because it allows for the possibility that everything has a perspective and therefore a voice, okay? So um, Pastasa Kichwa and Upper Napo Kichwa speakers are articulating, I believe, with these words, not only the ephemerality of their lived experiences, but also deeper truths about their connectedness with all created life, okay? And I wanna have a quote here. Um, I've, I've got a quote here from a member of the Muckleshoot community of Washington State. And I just found this by accident because I was interested in I was reading something about food and Valerie Seacrest said something that I think is so, um, so profound. She said, the first form of literacy was learning to read the landscape. Um, the curriculum was the land, okay? And you can, I've got a link here um, if anyone wants to check out this uh, quote from her, okay? So I, I have come around to the idea that speakers' accounts of everyday experience show that the rainforest is like a library and reading the landscape is done by being mindful of momentary perceptual experiences, not only for survival, but also for aesthetic appreciation and knowledge about the world and one's relations with it. Um, so really, I think these words actually reveal knowledge about people's interrelatedness with all beings, okay? Um, so what do I mean by that? Well, um, these idiophones, they can be used to express the perspectives and communicative abilities of all beings, whether human or non-human. Um, all languages, as I said, have idiophones. Languages vary in the extent to which they use these kinds of words. So English has lots of them, words like buzz, crunch, boing, twitter, TikTok, Zoom, you know, these, these words sound modern because they're names for current technologies and blogs and apps and platforms and tools. But actually a lot of them come from much earlier forms of English when idiophones were a more respectable form of expression. So, you know, these, these words are very old. They have a pedigree, you know, TikTok comes from the 1540s and crunch goes back to the 1600s, okay. Um, 
English also has idiophones for the sounds of non-humans. You know, so we say woof woof for dogs or meow for cats or neigh for horses or oink for pigs. Um, but these kinds of idiophones, they tend to be used in instructional contexts like early, early literacy interactions for young children. So for English speaking people, idiophones, they tend to have whimsical connotations. Um, but for Pastasa Quechua and Upper Napo Quechua speakers, I think they have a wider range of functions in spoken language, okay? So um, let's see, can I share this video? Can I, can I link to this video? Uh, um, yeah. I will, it, will it actually play? Try it. Okay. Okay, can people see the screen? Yes. Oh, good. All right, let's see. So let's listen to uh, us, an idiophone, which was very evocative for Luisa Cadena. Did that, did you guys hear that? We hear it, but we're not seeing the video, but. Oh, shoot. Okay. Um, um, hold on. Okay. Um, I, what I can do is when I when I want to show more videos, I'll do something about that. I'll I'll stop the screen sharing for a second, and then I'll I'll do something different. So it doesn't matter right now. But anyway, um. So Louisa was recalling trekking through the forest with her father as a very young child, and she was describing how her father mindfully perceived a rustling sound paras, and how her father considered its implications. So he said, um, so this is how she describes it. She says, and then something goes taras, 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 in a part of the forest where there are no people whatsoever, okay? Um, so upon hearing this sound, Louisa's father warns her and tells her that the spider monkeys he is hunting produce scat, which is a source of food for jaguars, okay? So Taras tells her and her father that there is there could be jaguars nearby. So her father warns her to stand by watching her surroundings carefully or they might end up becoming a jaguar's food. He says, Okay. <laughs> I can hear Belhika laughing at me. But um, in any case, he's saying, he's basically telling her that, you know, that, that this is a dangerous situation, that um, these spider monkeys are attracted to uh, these flowering plants that we're standing with in the midst of. And, um, and pumas are attracted to their scat. Therefore, we might end up being eaten. So, um, so watch carefully, okay? Um, yeah, so a single idiophone, taras, evokes the intricate interdependencies at play in this particular moment. The spider monkeys are feeding on the fruiting trees that surround Luisa and her father. Her father is hunting the spider monkeys for their own food. A jaguar might be nearby feeding on the spider monkey's scat or worse, preparing to turn humans into its next meal, okay? So a single idiophone evokes the fullness of this sensory experience, including an awareness of all the complex interrelations between themselves and the beings of the forest, as well as their emotional reactions to these interrelations, okay? Um, so, so um, the idiophones are expressing and evoking um, so much just by, by being uttered like this, okay? <clears throat> idiophones is express and evoke a whole range of emotions. They express sadness, happiness, fear, laughter, anger, love. They can also be used for warnings and they can also be used for deception, okay? So, um, I think what I'll do is I'll stop this share. I wanted to share with you some idiophones that illustrate these emotional qualities. And um, Todd, how much time do we have? I, I don't want to cut Elizabeth's presentation. Yeah, we need to leave about 10 minutes at the end. And we have about, about um, 
15 minutes to go. So maybe another five or five little, minutes. Okay. I don't okay. know, Joe, if we can go a couple minutes over, if it just cuts right off, I'm not sure. Let me, um, all right, hold on. Let me, um, let me try to um, share this and uh, hold on. Let's just go back to Tadas and then we can we can get to other, I think. Is this sharing? Yes. Okay. So let me go back. By the way, this is a really cool site which has all of these different idios, idiophones in them. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, can can we see the site? Yes, we can see it. Okay. So yeah, so this is um, this is my project. Um, it's a site devoted to idiophone. So let's just show a couple of these. I have a long list of different emotions that I could illustrate with the idiophones, but I don't. I don't. I'm mindful of. I want to be mindful of the time that I have. So let's go to um, let's go to an idiophone that displays sadness, and this is uh, from a video. Thanks to Todd who introduced two of our guest speakers. He, inter he interviewed Elodia and um, Belica about, oh, sorry, Delicia and, Delicia's not here, and Elodia about the sad sound of a tree crying when the tree has been chopped down, okay? So this is the tree's voice that we get to hear, okay? So she, they're saying crying, um, it's a cry, falling, it cries. Are, don't, haven't you heard it? Yaoong, crying. Um, this is what it sounds like when a big tree has been cut down. Okay, so the tree has emotions. Um, let's go to one more and... Uh, Let's, this is this is we get to hear Belika talking about uh, a bird making a happy sound. Okay, this is a hummingbird. Okay. So yeah, so when the hummingbird um, is happy, it makes this sound. Okay. Uh, <laughs> And there, interestingly, there's a there's a, a sad sound that the same kind of a bird can make with a slight modulation in its voice. It can, instead of saying doo, 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 it'll go doo, 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 when it's sad if it can't find water in the flowers that it's looking for to drink. Okay. So um, I think I better just stop here. I've got quite a few more examples of idiophones displaying laughter and fear and anger and deception, but um, you'll just have to go to the site and check it out yourself, okay? But to conclude, I simply wanted to say that, um, that idiophones and animism and mindfulness seem like a natural uh, trifecta, could I use that word, a natural triad of things that conspire together to create a beautiful awareness and a beautiful um, uh, way for people to express their connectedness with, with, with the whole created universe. And um, modern neurological studies of mindfulness have, have actually found evidence that greater awareness leads to a greater connection. Um, but it's, it's exclusively focused on people connecting with other people. I think idiophones and the way they're used lead to an even deeper level of interconnectedness between people and nature. Um, and that's all I'm going to say. Thank you. Thank you, Janice. Um, so let's move on to Elizabeth uh, Swanson Andi. Um, Elizabeth is a recent graduate of Arizona, Univers of Arizona State University. Um, and she was born in Ecuador and raised a good part of her life um, in the Quechua community of uh, Santurco. And she's also um, a 
cousin and related to Pedro Andi, who's here. And she's also related to me as she's my daughter. Uh, so welcome, Elizabeth. And um, so she is going to respond uh, also. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, so, Elena, Belgica, Pedro, Kalaringa, Kangunara, Ashka, Pagrash, Pagrachichunchi, Kanguna, Quintashka, Manda, Yapa, Kushichin, Shinayara, Yapa, Yaki, Yawachin. Angsa, Nyuga Karo, Yakta, Yakta, Angsa, Champi, Champi, pero Kanguna, Intindingi. All right, so I was just um, saying thanks, uh, you know, to my IU, my family, um, as I've learned so much from them. And what they've taught me has, you know, impacted my life greatly. And it's something that I always carry. Um, and it's something that brings me much joy and sadness as well as we saw kind of how we all responded to the videos that we saw, saw earlier on. So to begin, let me share the screen with you all. All right, so presentation on the importance of preserving the voices of our elders for future generations. Um, so as you all see, here are some pictures um, we have that I've captured that reminded me much, that I captured recently that reminded me much of my childhood. There's a monkey on a head, um, kind of towards, you know, the middle of the night, someone came up with a frog on their hand. And you see this little girl, a friend of mine, Pita, who was um, with this small Amazonian rodent. And for a lot of people, they, you know, from the, we say the outside world, can't really imagine these social and intimate relationships that people have. And sometimes they feel like, you know, you all might feel like this is something that's super deep in the Amazon, super far out there. But there's people like myself, you know, this new generation who grew up this way. Um, it's something that we hold in our hearts, you know, something that we experience and something that moves with us as we experience and live between two worlds. Um, and we have now a generation that you know, is going to college, is going out and studying different universities, going out for jobs, uh, maybe because of curiosity, you know, not many of us in the past have left our community, so we're starting to move out. Um, but as we move out, you know, it's a completely different world, and we want to also return, so it's kind of how do we exist between these two worlds? Um, and this picture right here is of a recent Zoom call. You know, in the past year, uh, I haven't been able to go back to my community, but here we are a bunch of, um, you know, Quechua young professionals who are gathering to talk about these videos and these recordings. And um, that's really exciting for us as it's kind of the first time that we've been able to do that. Um, and in the videos that we watch, we realize that there's an immense collapse in forests that we were talking about. The Rukus, our elders, are not talking about the animals anymore, at least not the way that they used to. And the Amus uh, are disappearing, and with them, so are the animals. So these are all connected. The forest, our elders, the Amus, all connected. Um, and there's an immense loss that we carry. So we have our experiences you know, from our communities um, that bring us joy, but also the loss that we um, have experienced and the loss that we see with this new perspective, you know, that there is um, the outside world has an effect on our communities. And so with this loss, you know, we go into maybe some classes or courses um, and we're taught new ways of thinking. And so here is a kind of a slideshow that, or a slide representing that. You know, I'm sitting in a classroom, in a science classroom, and on the left side, I have um, kind of like the thoughts that go in my mind as I'm listening to other things that I learn in our classes. So maybe as kids, we learn that animals are our relatives, right? But in class, we're listening to conversations and we hear that, no, they're separate from humans. Or we learn that animals can think and feel like we do. But then in classrooms, we hear that humans, you know, there's like a hierarchy. Humans can feel and think, but they're superior. And animals can't do that. 
um, maybe we might ask ourselves, who were they in their past life? You know, I often wonder, um, even if with animals that aren't from the Amazon, you know, I might be in a class and we're talking about other animals that aren't from there. Um, I also wonder, you know, like they might have their own stories. Um, they might have, they are their own beings. Um, but in our classrooms, we might learn that there are different species, you know, and that they have evolved through time. Um, and then finally, we also learn, you know, in our communities that we need to respect the earth and build or mend relationships with it. It's all about relationships. Um, and there is no hierarchy. But when we go to school, I often hear, you know, we need to save the planet, you know, like we as people need to save the planet. And the difference is that, you know, like in our Kichwa thinking and understanding, it's about relationships. So sure, we might have like our own part in, you know, saving the planet, um, but it's more about respect. And um, when, and it's about the connection, you know, between people um, and the Amus. And like what, like it was mentioned before, land really like saves itself uh, and we're connected through it. And so as Kichwa young professionals or people who move in and out of the communities, what lens do we see the world in? And here I kind of wanted to show, you know, we have our window from inside of our home, right? And then we gain a new perspective. And so we kind of have these multiple perspectives that are coming together. And when we're trying to figure out how to exist between them um, and do they collide? Do they make sense? Um, but really we see through both. We see through both lenses um, as we remember those who came before, as we remember our memories uh, from our, when we were little or even like recently when we do return home, um, we realize that we exist in these two worlds. But it's kind of hard because it's either we're in our communities and people in our community, our family members can't really understand this other world or it's we're in our schools and people can't even imagine the way we think and view life because it's very, very different. And so there's, um, we know that our stories are recorded in the land. But the question with this, right, is what happens when we lose our land? And with our land, what happens when we lose, lose our elders as well? Because um, they're very interconnected. And so through this, um, we realize that with time increasingly, um, you know, stories are lost. Um, <laughs> it feels like there's a lot of loss, a lot of loss and constant loss and rapid change. Um, but my point here is that it's important to not only record the stories, but also film. We need to, it's nice to see, you know, like the responses that people have the sounds that they make, uh, the way their hands move, the way that they laugh, um, it all feels like home, you know? And that's important just to preserve our language and our culture, but it's also important when we're away because we start feeling homesick, right? And it's also important because, you know, like um, usually land evokes memory. And I've had my aunts, you know, go to our gardens and they start singing a song that they had learned from someone, for example. And they start crying as they sing that song and it's because the land is evoking this memory. And when they teach us these songs, they teach us to all feel, you know, feel the joy, but also feel the pain and grief that comes with it. Um, and I think that these videos, you know, as difficult as it may be, it's part of our culture and tradition to really feel with everything that we have. Um, and it's something that we're losing, and that's why I think it's really important to record um, our stories. And these, you know, these ideas that we have are very, very difficult, or can be difficult to explain in Spanish or in English. Um, and so oftentimes we see um, people like myself um, that we express in art or in poems or in dance, you know, these are different ways of expressing. Um, and so I wanted to show you a couple of pieces of uh, things that I recently drew after watching some of these videos. So here we have Lumucha Amu. So this was a, a digital or painting um, right after I watched 
uh, my cousin Pedro Andy's video, right? And I had learned this before as when I was younger, you know, like he taught me about the face of mountains and um, how we should be careful around them, how we should respect them, and about how they're kind of like doorways between, you know, our human world and the spirit world and animals kind of go between them. So as you can see, there's a mountain here, um, eyes. <laughs> And sometimes these eyes aren't visible. These doorways aren't visible to myself. They exist and sometimes they close. So that was my response to that video. Um, this right here is a tapia quilling, which um, I drew after I had a dream. And with this specific dream, uh, there's a video that's also online, but we didn't get to watch it. Basically this bird, if you listen to it, something's gonna happen. Uh, there could be a possible death coming soon. Um, and I drew it, and then months later, but I didn't feel like it was complete. So months later, months passed, and I went back to it. And I felt like I needed to complete it by adding the markings, you know, on its chest and face, um, because it felt like I needed to represent both of those worlds, right? And so um, as we like believe that all the animals were humans in the previous world and they might carry those characteristics and just like them you know when we're talking about beauty we also might paint our faces wanting to look like them wanting to take that beauty from nature and express it ourselves um and then finally just this third piece it's kind of a reflection on identity you know this one was recently drawn as well as i'm missing home um, there's a lot that goes into this painting that I won't, um, there isn't time for, um, but it's something that's very special to me and hopefully when I go back home soon, um, it's a bowl in the center and it's full of aswa and I really wanna drink it. <laughs> and um, Elodia and Belgica, they have been just amazing in teaching me, you know, traditional ceramics. Um, and so there's a special piece reflecting on them. I think we're about out of time, but you okay. just got two more slides there. Yeah, I'll just finish off. So as we're li living and existing between these two places, um, we often don't have one place where we can feel whole. And I feel like, so Iarina's uh, Amazon and Andes Field School is a site that's run by our Kichwa family um, where we bring people together. And I think it's a place where we create bridges and where people like myself that live between two worlds can exist and be valued as bridges. So here we have a couple of pictures. Uh, we bring indigenous leaders, youth, knowledge carriers, scientists, academic experts, and students. Um, and we have a great time. <laughs> it's a really wonderful place to be. Um, and this is where you know these videos are recorded. Um, yeah. And finally, Iarina, the place of our site. Um, it's, it means to think or to remember, but it's different than the English word because it means to remember by looking at the land. So there's something physical to it. It means to think about the present and the future while thinking those who came before um, and those who are yet to come. And this whole idea, you know, is I think at the core of like who I am and um, what really inspires me to protect and take care of the land and also to preserve our culture and language. And hopefully it inspires other people as well. <laughs> well, thank you very much uh, to all of our presenters. Our, our time is up. Thank you very much to uh, Laura Toki for your beautiful and moving poem and um, comments on uh, the indigenous and the Navajo tradition in relation to the Quechua tradition. I'd like to thank our Quechua narrators. Um, I'd like to thank all of you for uh, listening and Janice also and Elizabeth for your uh, presentations. The time went pretty quickly. I think maybe we tried to pack too many videos in here. Um, and I see my sister, uh, Lisa, there too. Hello. Thank you all for coming. Um, I certainly, and I think the narrators also, we have, uh, you know, we have time to hang around, but our time is up. And I think, I don't know, uh, 
Joe, if the, this just turns off or can it stay along, around a little longer? Okay, all right. So the thank you and um, our session is formally done. And um, thank you all for your uh, questions. I wish we had had more time. Um, and so uh, thank you for coming and we're here. So if anybody wants that, talk more, ask questions, we're here. <laughs>